Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel all about VLSI. In this video, we are going to start with Verilog code development of UART protocol. Now, in our previous videos, we have seen uh, the theory which is needed for the protocol building and we have uh, discussed all the things uh, like baud rate, transmitter received, all the things we have discussed in our previous session. Now, in this session, we will try to start with the coding of our UART uh, Verilog code development. Before starting to develop the UART code, uh, Verilog code development, let us try to understand what, how we are going to design, what are the design requirements, how we are going to design. What are we going to design is a transmitter. We are going to design a transmitter which is going to transmit the UART frames which it, which it is receiving and we are going to design a receiver. We are going to design a transmitter and we are going to design a receiver. A transmitter is going to transmit a UART frames and the receiver is going to receive those UART frames. And the transmitter, it is going to receive those UART frames from the test bench. From the test bench, the transmitter, it is going to uh, receive those particular UART frames. The test bench, it is going to provide the UART frames to the transmitter. Okay. Now, this test bench is providing the transmitter, the UART frames in parallel format. And this transmitter, what it is going to do is, it is going to convert this parallel frames into serial frames. And the serial packets are sent one by one to the receiver. After receiver receiving this serial format frames, it is going to convert them into parallel format. And it is going to give it back to the test. Now, we have already seen that uh, for maintaining the synchronization between the transmitter and receiver, we need a concept of baud rate, okay. For achieving that particular baud rate, we will have one more design, one more module, which is known as baud rate generator, baud rate generator. Using this baud rate generator, we are going to maintain the synchronization between our transmitter and receiver. Using this baud rate generator, we are going to maintain that particular thing. Okay, so this is what we are going to design. Let's see what we are going to do. And this you can see it as a test or talk. And for this, we are going to write down the test bench. Okay, let's see what is a baud rate generator. First of all, let us start our discussion with baud rate generator. What are the inputs? What are the outputs for our baud rate generator? Let us try to understand. So coming to our baud rate generator, this is our baud rate generator module. And this module is going to have a clock as our input and uh, output as rx underscore enable and tx underscore enable and this clock frequency it is equal to 50 megahertz this clock frequency it is equal to 50 megahertz this is our baud rate generator module that's it baud rate generator module so this is going to have a simple input as clock and output as rx underscore enable and tx underscore enable and this is going to enable this rx underscore enable and tx underscore enable according to the baud rate requirements now we are going to design this baud rate generator for achieving a baud rate of 9600 so accordingly we are going to develop our code let us see how to develop this code this is the block diagram of our baud rate generator okay let us see how to develop this and in our previous videos also when we were discussing about this baud rate generator for achieving a baud rate of 9600 and with a clock frequency of 50 megahertz what are we doing so what is our plan of action is we are going to uh, have a counter we are going to have a so we are going to have a counter uh, which is going to so what we are going to do is first of all we are going to divide this uh, uh, 50 megahertz with our baud rate that is 50 into 10 power 6 divided by 9600 okay 50 into 10 power 6 divided by 9600 uh, let's see what are we getting 1 2 3 4 5 6 divided by 9600 that is 5208 this is our divider so we are going to get 5208 now we are going to develop a counter we are going to develop a counter which is going to count up to 5208 we are going to develop a counter which is going to count up to 5208 and if this counter has reached this particular value it will go back to zero 
and if this counter has reached the value of zero, then what we are going, we are going to enable our tx underscore enable. We are going to enable our tx underscore enable. Basically, we are waiting up to this many clock cycles and we are enabling this tx underscore enable. And this tx underscore enable signal is given to our transmitter. This is given to our transmitter. And similarly, for rx underscore enable, we are basically adding a sampling oversampling factor which is nothing but 16. What is this oversampling factor? Why we are doing this and why we are dividing this? Everything we have discussed in our previous session. If you are having any doubt, please watch the previous recordings. So if we are dividing by 16, let's see what is the uh, thing which we are getting 5600, let's uh, 9600 into 16, 9600 into 16 is 153,600. So 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 divided by 153,600 is nothing but 325. So for receiver, for the receiver counter, we are going to take one more counter, which is counter underscore Rx. This is going to count up to 325 cycles. After reaching 325 cycles, it will go back to zero. And if it has reached to zero, then our Rx underscore enable will become high. So Rx underscore enable will become high. Rx underscore enable will become high for every 325 cycles, whereas Three, tx underscore enable will become high for every 5208 5, cycles. What is this tx underscore enable and rx underscore enable? Basically, this tx underscore enable, whenever it is high, then only we are going to perform transmit operation. When Then only we are going to perform the transmitting operation. And whenever our rx underscore enable is equal to high, then only we are going to perform the receiving operation. Then only we are going to perform the receiving operation. So this is how we are going to maintain the synchronization. And if you carefully observe, Rx underscore enable will be high for 16 number of, uh, Rx underscore enable will be high for more number of times because we don't need to miss any part of data. Okay, there should be no mismatch in data. So that's why I'm doing receiving for more number of times compared to the transmit enable. So this is the reason why we are taking this. Now, for uh, what is what should be the width of the counters? So we are going to declare two counters. One is counter underscore tx and another is counter underscore rx one is counter underscore tx and another is counter underscore rx and counter underscore tx should count up to 5208 value and counter underscore rx should count up to 325 so for 5208 let us see what is the binary value of this so 5208 it means 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so this counter underscore tx, I am going to declare it as 13 bits. And this counter underscore rx, 325. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going uh, to declare it with uh, some 10 bits. Okay. So this counter underscore tx, I am going to declare it with 13 bits and counter underscore rx, I am going to declare it with 10 number of bits and I'm going to increment them whenever I'm going to reach the value 0 I'm going to make that particular thing to be uh, tx underscore enable is equal to 1 or tx underscore rx will be equal to uh, rx underscore enable will be equal to 1 this is the plan so let's say let so let me declare a module which is known as board rate generator and the inputs for this is our clock and the outputs are tx underscore enable and rx underscore enable and here what I am going to do is I am going to declare a variable rich and what is the size of this is 13 bits so 12 down to 0 tx underscore counter and rich it is of 10 bits 9 down to 0, 9 down to 0, rx underscore counter. So I am going to take this and uh, within and always and at the rate uh, passage of clock begin. I am going to uh, check if my rx 
underscore counter has reached this value that is nothing but 5280 5 2 0 8 if it has reached it then my rx underscore counter is equal to 0 else my rx underscore counter which is equal to rx underscore counter plus 1 full band and similarly I am going to do the same thing for my tx underscore counter then a second always block I am going to do it for my tx underscore counter if tx underscore counter has reached the value of 325 325 then tx underscore counter value will be equal to 0 or else my tx underscore counter will be incremented tx underscore counter is equal to tx underscore counter plus 1 okay and followed by end module so this is what i am going to perform followed by end module this is my baud rate generated module and the tx underscore enable let us write the tx underscore enable and rx underscore enable code also always at the rate passage of clock or you can simply write sorry it's a wire right so assign tx underscore enable which is equal to tx underscore counter is equal to equal to and this is rx underscore counter this is tx underscore counter tx underscore counter plus one and this is rx underscore counter this is rx underscore counter now here if tx underscore counter value is equal to zero then my tx underscore enable will be equal to one or else my tx underscore enable value will be equal to zero assign tx under rx underscore enable which is equal to rx underscore counter which is equal to zero then it will be equal to one or else it will be equal to zero so this is my logic for tx underscore enable and rx underscore enable so this is how i am going to design my baud rate generator model and i am going to uh, get my tx underscore enable signals and rx underscore enable signals which is going to be given to our transmitter model and our receiver model so that's about my baud rate generator and in our next sessions we are going to discuss about transmitter module as well as we are also going to discuss about receiver module so that's all about this particular video if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel all about vlsi thank you for watching this video